Welcome back to our special study, The Selling of the 144,000, Part 6. And before we go onwards, let us ask the presence of the Lord through a special prayer. Gracious, loving Father, heart in heaven, we come unto you to thank you for the special privilege you have given to us to study the Holy Word. And please help us to understand thy message and bless also the listeners of this video that they may be able to comprehend it. Thank you so much in answering our prayer. In the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Amen. <coughs> Today we'll be dealing with the last part of the series of the study about the ceiling of the 144,000. And this presentation will be dealing with the release of the four winds, such as the outpouring of the seven last plagues. Here we will be dealing about the partial resurrection. I will be answering the question whether the 144,000 those who died under the third angel's message will be resurrected and will be answering whether 144,000 will pass death or not or all of them will be alive without tasting death when Jesus will come. I will go through the second coming of Christ until the coronation morning in the sea of glass. So I would like to welcome you back and please listen carefully and I pray that the Lord will help you as we will present this message. In the book, Early Writings 36, it is saying this statement, I saw that the four angels would hold the four winds until Jesus' work was done in the sanctuary, and then will come the seven last plagues. Another parallel statement in early writings 43, we read, Satan was trying his every art to hold them where they were until the ceiling was passed, until the covering was drawn over God's people, and they left without a shelter from the burning wrath of God, the seven last plagues. God has begun to draw his covering over his people and it will be soon drawn over all who are to have a shelter in the day of slaughter. Here we can understand that when the four winds will be released, then the work of Jesus in the most holy place also will be finished. And then will come the seven last plagues. And the seven last plagues will be the day of slaughter as mentioned in Ezekiel 9. So it is understood that Ezekiel 9 and uh, Revelation 15 and 16 are the same. Now let's go to uh, another paragraph in Revelation 15 verse 1 and Revelation 18 verse 8. And I saw another sign in the heaven, great and marvelous seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. So what is the wrath of God? It is the seven last plagues. How many angels are carrying the vials? Seven of them. And how many they or days will be the plagues. Revelation 18 verse 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who judgeth her. So, anong ibig sabihin ng her plagues will come in one day? Ayun po sa uh, Nehemiah, I should say, Numbers 14 verse 34 and Ezekiel 4 verse 6, 
that one day is equivalent to one year. At sinabi po dito sa Revelation 18 verse 8 na ang plagues po will come in one day. Ibig sabihin, one day is equivalent to one year. Ibig sabihin, uh, probably the plagues will be around one year. At saka pa, dito po sa Revelation 16 verses 2, 10, and 11, that when the darkness that will uh, set on the throne of the beast, they will still feel the pain of the source. Ibig sabihin na ang una, pangalawa, tatlo, apat, hanggang sa katapusan, maliban lang po sa special na plagues doon po sa throne of the beast, every plagues will be cumulative. Ibig sabihin, yung una, hindi pa natapos nung dumating, dumating yung pangalawa hanggang sa pampito. At sabi dito, mga kapatid, Sino pong unang makatanggap sa pitong salot? Ayon po sa early writings, page 36. Then I was shown a company who were howling in agony. On their garments was written a large characters that were weighed in the balance and found one thing. I asked who this company were. The angel said, These are they who have once kept the Sabbath and had given it up. I heard them cry with a loud voice, We have believed in thy coming, and thought it with energy. And while they were speaking, their eyes would fall upon their garments and see the writing, and then they would wail aloud. I saw that they had drunk of the deep waters, and fouled the residue with their feet, trodden the Sabbath underfoot, and that was why they were weighed in the balance and found one thing. Sino po ang una makatanggap sa salot ng Panginoon? Ang mga uh, tao na sila po ay, sa unang panahon, they were keeping the Sabbath, but they were not sanctified by it. At ano mangyari, they will be howling and agony, they will be complaining. You know, look, we were preaching about the Sabbath with energy. We are teaching it to other people. But why is it that we are suffering from the plagues? Pero ang isang anghel po nagturo sa kanilang damit at doon po nila nakikita na they were found one thing. Why? Because they had trodden the Sabbath underfoot. So, bilang parallel na statement, sino po ang una makatanggap ng pitong salot? Dito po sinasabi ang mga tao na nag-keep na sabat. Anong simbahan? Dito po, volume 5, 211, paragraph 1. Go ye after him through the city, and smite, let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity, slay utterly old and young both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin at my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house. Here we see that the church, the Lord's sanctuary, was the first to feel the stroke of the wrath of God. Ano pong simbahan na unang makatanggap ng pitong salot? Ito po is tinatawag dito the Lord's Sanctuary. Sino po ang santuario ng Panginoon? Ito po ay bayan ng Seventh-day Adventist na hindi po nagiging na sanctify sa kautosan ng Panginoon. At ang pitong salot po ay matanggap kahit sino mang hindi nakatanggap ng silyo ng buhay na Diyos. Ang unang salot po ay, ano po? Makita natin, <clears throat> is a noisome and grievous sore. At ang pangalawa, ang dagat po, ang tubig ng dagat, it will turn into blood. At ang masaklap dito ay hindi lang prisko na dugo, 
yung dugo sa isang tao na patay. Ibig sabihin, putrefied na blood, very stinky. You can hardly support it. Sobrang baho. At ang mga fountains ng tubig sa ilog ay magiging dugo din, yung pangatlo. At ang pangapat, the sun will be heated severely that it will what scorch the people, the animals, and will burn the plantations, the trees, the herbs, the plants. At ang panglima, a special kind of plague to the throne of the beast. At ang makadiliman dito ay very thick and they will also suffer the pain of all those plagues that had passed by, especially the sore in their body. Yung pang-anim po na salot, the water of the Euphrates River will dry up and he gathered them together into a place called Armageddon. This will be a literal combined with a spiritual war. It started to fight their common enemy, uh, the people of God, in which they believe that the people of God causes the plagues. So ngayon po, wala nang isang relihiyon na hindi pwedeng sumama sa gira na ito dahil lahat, pati Inchik, pati Haponis, pati na mga Muslim, Buddhist, Hindus, lahat-lahat na Katoliko, at lahat ng mga religion na hindi nakatanggap ng seal of the living God will receive the plagues. So ang common enemy nila, nakita nila mga santos, walang plaga, uh, sabi nila, if we can rid out these people, then the plagues will stop. So they will come together and there will be a decree will be sent for that in one day they will kill the people of God. But then the seven plagues will come which is a big and great earthquake that the islands will flee away and the mountains will be destroyed. And aside from that, there will be a rainfall of hail out from heaven. Ngayon po, Ang tanong, why does it say that the 144,000 do not taste death? Anong klaseng kamatayan na hindi maranasan ng membro ng 144,000? Let us read, Early Writings 36. These plagues enraged the wicked against the righteous. They thought that we had brought the judgment of God upon them, and that if they could read the earth of us, the plagues would then be stayed. A decree went forth to slay the saints, which caused them to cry day and night for deliverance. This was the time of Jacob's trouble. Then all the saints cried out with anguish of spirit and were delivered by the voice of God. So there was a paper circulated that one day the saints will be killed because the wicked thought that the plagues came because of the saints. But ang Panginoon po ay mag-deliver sa kanyang mga tao, sa kanyang bayan. Sabi po dito sa Spiritual Gifts 143, I saw a writing copies of which were scattered in different parts of the land, giving orders that unless the saints should yield their peculiar faith, give up the Sabbath, and observe the first day of the week, the people were at liberty after a certain time to put them to death, sit and wished to have the privilege of destroying the saints of the Most High. But Jesus bade his angels What's over them? God would be honored by making a covenant with those who had kept his law. In the sight of the heathen, round about them, and Jesus would be honored by translating without their seeing death the faithful waiting ones who had so long expected him. 
So anong ori na kamataya na hindi maranasan ng mga miyembro ng 144,000? Ito pong kamatayan sa death decree. Dahil po, bago uh, patayin sila, merong isang copies that orders the killing of the saints in all parts of the world. Pero ang maganda dito dahil the angels of God will watch over the people of God. At saka, sabi dito, Jesus will be honored to translate them to heaven without seeing death. What kind of death? This death, the death decree during the seven last plagues. At sabi dito sa early writings 282, God would be honored by making a covenant with those who had kept his law in the sight of the heathen round about them and Jesus would be honored by translating without their seeing death the faithful waiting ones who had so long expected him. So ito pong oring kamatayan na hindi nila maranasan. They don't see death by persecution in these plagues. But some will see death since the sealing commenced in 1844, but are raised in Daniel 12 to during the special resurrection. Ibig sabihin dito na ang 144,000 merong patay. Mula 1844 until sa close of probation, merong mamatay. But pagdating po ng seven last plagues, wala nang mamatay. Kaya dito sa death decree na ito, walang mamatay dahil Jesus will be honored to translate them to heaven without seeing death. Tingnan natin ang isang uh, quotation na sinulat po ni John N. Laughborough on the question on sealing, page 28, paragraph 1. We see that the death they are saved from is the death permitted by the papers circulated. So they are to be translated at Christ's coming without the suffering, the threatened death. By this decree, they are brought into the time of Jacob's trouble. And his, and his trouble was the news that Esau was coming with 400 armed men unless the Lord should aid him. It looked like death to him and his whole family. So, anong ibig sabihin po ng Jacob's time of trouble? Na nalalaman natin that when Jacob was about to go back to his parents' place, when he was about to reach the place, he heard that Esau will come to meet him with 400 soldiers he knew that Esau was so angry with him. And in that night, he was so perplexed and was so anguished that without the divine help, it would mean death for him and his family. So during that night, there was a great anguish in the spirit of Jacob. So also, he was not worried about death, but he was worried if his sins were not forgiven. So that when Esau will come, it is not a problem for if he will be killed, no problem. But at least his sins were already forgiven. So during the seven last plagues also, the saints were not worried about death. They were worried if they have some sins not repented of and not forgiven. And ayun po dito sa Revelation 16, 17 and 18. It follows that during the time that the saints will be attacked by the enemies. That's the time that the Lord will deliver his people. What will happen at the beginning of the seventh plague? And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done! And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was great earthquakes such as was not since men were upon the earth. 
so mighty an earthquake and so great. Dito po makikita natin at the pouring down of the seventh plague, there was a mighty voice that will say, it is done. And that voice created a big earthquake. And that earthquake was so special that there was no nation, no person had experienced that kind of earthquake since when there was a nation. And in Daniel 12 verse 1, let us read. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. In Daniel 12, 1 and 2, we understand here that when Michael shall stand up, there will be a time of trouble. And there will be a special resurrection. One group will go to everlasting life, and the other group will go to everlasting shame and contempt. Early Writings 285, paragraph 1, explained about Daniel 12, 1 and 2. Ano pong sabi sa early writings 285? The graves were opened, and those who have died in faith under the third angel's message, keeping the Sabbath, came forth from their dusty beds glorified to hear the covenant of peace that God was to make with those who had kept His law. At dito po, pinagtutuloy uh, ng great controversy upang magiging mas klaro sa ating uh, pag na ano po ang ibig sabihin ng Daniel 12.1. Dito po sa early writings, sinabi na may ma-resurrect. Ma Sila po yung mga tao who had faith under the third angel's message. At sa Daniel 12, uh, Daniel 12, 1 and 2, komentari po ng Great Controversy ay may dalawang ori na mga na-resurik. Tingnan natin. Great Controversy 637. Graves are opened and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All who have died in the faith of the third angel's message come forth from the tomb glorified to hear God's covenant of peace with those who had kept his law. They also which pursed him, those that mock and derided Christ's dying agonies, and the most violent opposers of his truth and his people are raised to behold him in his glory and to see the honor placed upon the loyal and obedient. So here, we can understand that there are two groups that will be resurrected at the partial resurrection. One that will go to everlasting life. Who are they? Those who believe. Those who uh, live and keep their faith under the third angel's message. And they will be resurrected to everlasting life. And notice that they were resurrected glory with a glorified body. Anong ibig sabihin ng glorified body? It is not yet immortal. They have still mortal body. So pag uh, may pumapatay sa kanila po, hindi pa rin silang mapatay. What about the second group? Sila po yung mga tao that First, Jesus side, sila yung mga taong that mock and derided Christ at yung mga violent opposers of the truth and His people. At isa sa mga example sa mga tao na 
na nampalataya sa third English message pero namatay dito po sa Faith Alibi 173 or second uh, volume of selected messages 263. The news of your wife's death was to me overwhelming. I could hardly believe it and can hardly believe it now. God gave me a view last Sabbath night, which I will write. I saw that she was sealed and would come up at the voice of God and stand upon the earth and would be with the 144,000. I saw we need not mourn for her. She would rest in the time of trouble and all that we could mourn for was our loss in being deprived of her company. I saw her death would result in good. Dito po makikita natin na isa sa mga may pananampalataya sa third angel's message, siya po'y patay na, but she will be resurrected when? During this partial resurrection. Sabi po dito, na I saw that she was sealed and would come up at the voice of God. Ito pong resurrection na ito ay sa panahon ng partial resurrection. At may pangalawang example po sa mga tao na may pananampalataya sa third angel's message. Sila po ay ma-resurrect dito po sa partial resurrection. Bible Commentary, Volume 7, 982. There are living upon the earth men who have passed the age of fourscore and ten. The natural result of old age are seen in their feebleness, but they believe God, and God loves them. The seal of God is upon them, and they will be among the number of whom the Lord has said, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. Bakit po sila ay blessed? Kahit patay na? Because they will be resurrected during the partial resurrection. Sino po sila? Yung mga tao na matatanda na in the time of Ellen G. White, one score is equivalent to 20 years at ang edad nila po ay four score and ten. So 20 times four, that is 80 plus 10, that is 90 years old in the time of Ellen G. White. Surely they will not survive until, even until today. They died already. But in a partial resurrection, they will be resurrected. So, ang tanong ay, sino po ang mag kanila? Ang ama o ang anak? Ang ama ng Diyos o si Panginoong Heso Kristo? Ayun po sa Great Controversy, page 637. In the midst of the angry heavens is one clear space of indescribable glory. Whence come, whence comes the voice of God like the sound of many waters, saying, It is done. That voice shakes the heavens and the earth. There is a mighty earthquake, such as was not since men upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Dito po makikita natin na sa seven plague, the moment it will be poured down, then the voice of God, the Father, will be heard. It is done. Ngayon po, sino kaya itong voice of God? Is it, is it the voice of the Son or voice of the Father? Great Controversy 640. The voice of God is heard from heaven declaring the day and hour of Jesus coming and delivering the everlasting covenant of his people. During the de uh, declaration of the day and hour of Jesus coming, who will do that? Of course, it is the Father. So the voice of God means it is the voice of God the Father. And it is apparent and very clear that the one that will resurrect the 144,000 or dead 144,000 will be the voice of the Father. Now, let us see here the 
let us see here the chart during the partial resurrection the one that will be resurrected are members of the 144,000 who were dead from 1844 until the partial resurrection then they will be resurrected at the beginning of the seven last plagues this will be the partial resurrection and when Jesus will come after the seven last plagues at the seventh plague when it is finished then Jesus will come and there will be another resurrection and those that will be resurrected there will be the great multitude because the great multitude are all dead from the time of Edom until Sunday law all of them will be dead and they will be resurrected when Jesus will come at the clouds of heaven now we can understand here that uh, Enoch and Elijah are representations of the living saints those who did not taste death natural death none of them who had tasted, tasted death Ayon po sa Review on Herod, April 29, 1875, paragraph 8. Enoch's translation to heaven represents the commandment keeping people of God who will be alive upon the earth when Christ shall come the second time and who will be glorified in the sight of those who hated them because they would keep the commandments of God. This also will be translated to heaven without seeing death as Enoch and Elijah were. So merong membro ng 144,000 na hindi nakatikim ng natural na kamatayan. So they represents Enoch and Elijah. And another representation of Elijah is found in the Sarah of Ages 422. Let us read. Elijah who had been translated to heaven without seeing death, represented those who will be living upon the earth at Christ's second coming, and who will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, when this mortal must put on immortality and this corruptible must put on incorruption. Ibig sabihin dito na si Elijah ay nagrepresentar sa mga santos po na membro ng 144,000 na buhay na sila na lahat buhay na at the coming of Christ dito po makikita natin na ito po ay kompleto na ng 144,000 pero may mga tao na hindi nakarana, nakaranas ng kamatayan si Elijah po at saka si Enoch ay example Pero si Elijah rin ay example or representation sa lahat ng buhay na mga santos when Jesus will come. Why? Because all of them will be alive. Even they died, they will be translate, they will be resurrected, I should say, in the partial resurrection. So that when Jesus will come, all members of the 144,000 are alive already. And Elijah represented them. The Sarah of Ages 422. Ano po ang turo sa mga pioneers about sa partial resurrection? Tingnan natin. Ano po ang sinasabi ni Uriah Smith? According po sa review on Herald August 10, 1897. Those who die after having identified with the third angel's message are evidently numbered as a part of the 144,000. For this message is the same as the sealing of Revelation 7, and by that message, only 144,000 were sealed. But there are many who have their entire religious experience under this message, but had fallen in death. They die in the Lord, and hence are counted as sealed. Kaya dito po, klaro na si Uriah Smith nagpatotoo na kahit po sila namatay, but they believe the message of the third angels 
they will be evident, evidently numbered as part of the 144,000. Ano pong sinasabi ni James White? Ayan po sa Review and Herald, September 23, 1880. Those who died under the third angel's message will be a part of the 144,000 and not an addition to it. However, it will help to complete that number. So, yung mga namatay under the third angel's message during partial resurrection, they will not be what? There will not be an addition to it, but will be part of it in order to complete the 144,000. What about William White? Now to the question, did Sister White teach that those who died in the message since 1844 and of whom it is said, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth that they shall be members of the 144,000? Ito po ang tanong. Ito po ba'y toro ni Sister Elenja White? Pag namatay na under the third English message from 1844, sila po ba'y membro sa 144,000? Ano pong sagot? I can assure you, my brother, that this was the belief and the teaching of Elenja White. Many times I, I have heard her making statements to this effect. And I am in position of a letter to Brother Hastings, who is mentioned on page 137 of the Life Sketches, in which he says plainly that his wife, who had recently died, would be a member of the 144,000. Kaya po nagpapatutuo si uh, William White na si Sister Hastings ay tutuo na sinasabi ni Sister White na magiging membro sa 144,000. At sinabi pa niya na totoo yan. Ito po'y teaching ni Ellen G. White na pag mamatay under the third English message, they will be automatically part of the 144,000. What about Stephen Haskell? In the book uh, 252 of the book of Stephen Haskell, so those who have fallen asleep, having the seal of God, will have a special resurrection and will be called forth to hear the covenant of peace and to behold their Lord as He comes in the clouds of heaven. Ibig sabihin po na ang mga patay under the third angel's message, they will be resurrected and will be part of the 144,000. What about John Loughborough? Question on ceilings, 1916, John in Loughborough. If there is still a doubt of the resurrected Sabbath keepers being numbered with 144,000, consider the following from Sister Wise's words in 1909, 1909, I should say. At the General Conference in 1909, Elder Irwin had a stenographer accompany him in a call upon Sister White. He wished to ask her some questions and have an exact copy of the words of the questions and the exact words of the same replies. Among other questions was this one. Will those who have died in the message be among the 144,000? In reply, Sister White said, Oh yes, those who have died in the faith will be among the 144,000. I am clear on that matter. These were the exact words of question and answer as Brother Erwin permitted me to copy from his stenographer's report. So, who are those people that will go to everlasting contempt, the second group? Because the first group that will go to everlasting life, we had proven already that they will be part of the 144,000. What about those who will be resurrected that will go to everlasting shame and contempt? Revelation 1 verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which first him, 
and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Matthew 26, 64. Jesus said unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of the power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Here we can understand na kahit pa yung sila po'y nagpako ni Panong Jesus, sila po si Pilato, sila po si Kayapas, sila po si Anas, sila si Herodes, yung mga Fariseo, mga Saduceo, yung mga angry mob, lalo na yung mga uh, angry people and those who derided Jesus Christ will be resurrected to see Jesus coming in the clouds of glory. Great Controversy 637. Ano po ang komentaryo ni Sister White? Sabi, They also with which pursed him, those that mock and derided Christ's dying agonies, and the most violent opposers of his truth, and his people are raised to behold him in his glory, and to see the honor placed upon the loyal and obedient. Klaro, mga kapatid, na sila pong mga tao that will go to everlasting shame and contempt. Sila po yung mga aktor at saka aktres sa panahon ng crucifixion. At ayon po dito, nalalaman natin na sa panahon po ng pagdeklarar sa araw at oras ng pagbalik ni Jesus, may dalawang ori lang na mga tao na buhay. Let us see. Early writings 14 verse 1. Soon I heard, soon we heard the voice of God like many waters which give us the day and hour of Jesus coming. The living saints, 144,000 in number, knew and understood the voice while the wicked thought it was thunder and an earthquake. Ibig sabihin, nung ideklarar na ng Panginoong Diyos na Ama and day and hour of Jesus coming, only the, hundred, only the 144,000 can understand it, while the rest, the wicked, thought it was thunder and an earthquake. Kaya po, may dalawang grupo lang na buhay at the declaration of the day and hour of Jesus coming. Number one, the living 144,000 composed of those who were resurrected during the partial resurrection and those who are alive who did not taste death. At ang ikalawang grupo, yung mga wicked. Noong si Jesus po ay just about to come and He will be in the clouds. Ano po ang sinyal na siya po ipaparito na? Great Controversy 640 and 641. Soon there appears in the east a small black cloud about half the size of a man's hand. It is the cloud which surrounds the Savior and which seems in the distance to be shrouded in darkness. And the people of God know this is to be the sign of the Son of Man. Ibig sabihin na ang sinyal na lalaman ng mga tao ng Diyos, ito po ay isang ulap na itim, about half the size of man's hand. Ito po ay sinyal na si Jesus ay paririto na sa mundong ito. At ano pong reaction sa mga wicked people, especially those who were the actors and actresses during the crucifixion? Tingnan natin, Great Controversy 643. There are those who mock Christ in His humiliation. Now they behold Him in His glory, and they are yet to see Him sitting in the right hand of power. Those who derided Him, His claims to be the Son of God are speechless now. There is the haughty Herod 
who jeered at his royal title and bade the mocking soldiers crown him king. There are the very men who with impious hands placed upon him his form, the purple robe. Upon his sacred brow also they placed the thorny crown. The men who smooth and spit upon the prince of life now turn from his piercing gaze and seek to flee from the overpowering glory of his presence. Those who drove the nails through his hands and feet, the soldiers who pierced his side, behold his marks with terror and remorse. With awful distinctness, do priests and rulers recall the events of Calvary. With shuddering horror, they remember how wagging their heads in satanic exultation, they exclaim, In the sin and punishment of those unfaithful men, the priests and the elders see their own cause and their own just doom. And now this there rises a cry of mortal agony. He is the Son of God. He is the true Messiah. They seek to flee from the presence of the King of Kings in the deep caverns of the earth, rent asunder by the warring of the elements they vainly attempt to hide. Kaya mga kaibigan, yung mga violent opposers ni Cristo, those who derided Him, those who mocked Him, those who pierced His side, those who nailed his hands and feet with a nail. There the haughty Kayapas, Pilate, Herod, the Sadducees, and the Pharisees will see him. And finally, they will cry with agony. He is the Son of God. He is the true Messiah. And they will run away from his presence. Where? In the deep caverns of the earth rent out by the warring of the elements. Tago sila mga kaibigan. San po? Sa mga kavernas. Doon po sa mga kuiba. They are afraid to see the face of whom they were persecuting before. Now, ano pong masasabi po sa nung si Jesus po ipaparito na? Ano po mangyari sa mga tao na mga santos Pero hindi sila po under the third angel's message. Sila po ay nagiging santos according to the light they receive. Pero sila po ay mga taong banal. Ayon po sa 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And when we are alive and remain, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be the Lord. Ano po mangyari dito? Ayon po sa komentaryo ng Great Controversy 644. Amid the reeling of the earth, the flash of lightning, and the roar of thunder, the voice of the Son of God calls forth the sleeping saints. He looks upon the graves of the righteous. Then, raising his hand to heaven, he cries, Awake, 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 ye that sleep in the dust, and arise throughout the land and breath of the earth. The dead shall hear that voice, and they that hear shall alive. Here we understand na si Cristo po, noong siya po ipareto na, He will shout with a loud voice which says, Awake, 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 all ye that sleep on the dust. At yung salita na yan will burst to the ears of the dead. And they will wake up and come up, come out from their tomb with a mortal body. Ano, ano po mangyari? Great Controversy 644, Paragraph 2, continued. And the whole earth shall ring with the tread of the exceeding great army of every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. From the prison house of death, they come, clothed with immortal glory, crying, 
O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? And the living righteous and the rising saints unite their voices in a long, glad shout of victory. Dito po makikita natin na may dalawang grupo na nung si Jesus po ay paririto na for the second time. Una po ay living righteous. Ang pangalawa po ay the rising saints. Dito po makikita natin na may dalawang resurrection. The first one is during the beginning of the seventh plague. It is called the partial resurrection. Part of the sleeping 144,000 will be what? Will be resurrected. And also part of the wicked, especially those who are violent opposers, those who mocked Jesus Christ, those who derided him, and those who pursed him will be resurrected in order for them to see Jesus in his coming. And the second resurrection will be called the great general resurrection of the just. The hundred portable thousand will be in the partial resurrection, but in this resurrection, general resurrection of the just will be the great multitude. Okay, so the moment the resurrection will come, especially in this general resurrection, ano po mangyari sa dalawa? Grupo, the living righteous and the rising saints. Kasi si Kristo po ay hindi pupunta sa lupa na natili siya doon po sa ulap. Great Controversy 645, paragraph 2. The living righteous are changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. At the voice of God, they were glorified. Now they are made immortal and with the rising saints are caught up to meet their Lord in the air. Na po ibig sabihin dito. Yung living righteous, the 144,000, they were only glorified, especially those who were resurrected during the partial resurrection. Ano ibig sabihin ng glorified? Hindi pa nakatanggap ng immortal body. Sila po ay mortal pa. Kaya dito na po sa pagparito ng Panong Jesus sa second coming, they will be changed in a twinkling of an eye to have immortal body. Aha. So, hindi na sila mamatay. At, gayon pa man, yung mga rising saints, automatic, meron na silang immortal body. Both of them, the living righteous, which are the 144,000, and the rising saints, which are the great multitude, will be caught up to meet their Lord in the air. At dito po sa Great Controversy 645, they will travel to the sea of glass for seven days. On each side of the cloudy chariot are wings, and beneath it are living wheels. And as the chariot rolls upward, the wheels cry, Holy, and the wings as they move cry, Holy, and the retinue of angels cry also, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, and the redeemed shout, Alleluia, as the chariot moves onward toward the new Jerusalem. At dito po sa Christ, Christian Experience and Teaching of Ellen J. White, 59, We all enter the cloud together and were seven days ascending to the sea of glass. Anong ibig sabihin ng seven days? Kasi may mabasa tayo that there was a, a silence in heaven for but at least half an hour. At ang half an hour is equivalent to seven days. Kasi ang lahat ng mga anghel doon po sa langit ay sumama kay Kristo that there will, there will be silence in heaven. And this will cost seven days to go back. That's why there will be seven days silence in heaven. And that will be seven days traveling from the earth to the sea of glass. When Jesus brought the crowns and with his own right hand placed them 
on our heads. He gave us harps of gold and palms of victory. Si Jesus po mismo ang maglagay ng corona na uh, de oro, corona na de oro. At saka palma po na ibinigay ng Panginoon, a sign of victory. There will be four kinds of redeemed in that great coronation morning of Jesus Christ. Ayan po sa mababasa natin sa Great Controversy 665. Nearest the throne are those who were once zealous in the cause of Satan, but who pluck as brands from the burning have followed their Savior with deep, intense devotion. Next are those who perfected Christian characters in the midst of falsehood and infidelity, those who honor the law of God when the Christian world declared it void, and the millions of all ages who were martyred for their faith, and beyond is the great multitude which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues. Do doon po sa coronation morning, si Cristo po ay magkaroon ng isang malaking uh, piging ng lahat ng mga redeem. Ang una po, malapit po sa trono, yung 24 elders, they were black as brands from the burning. At ang pangalawang grupo po ay perfected Christian characters. Mga tao po na perfecto sa panahon po na ang Christian world declared that the law was void. Sino po sila? Yun po ay 144,000. Yung pangatlo po ang millions of all the ages who were martyred for their faith. At ang pinakahuli po, yung great multitude which no man could number of all nations, kindred, kindreds, tongue, and people. Kaya po, sa study na ito, we were able to answer already na ang 144,000, may membro sila napatay from 1844, but all of them will be alive when Jesus will come. Why? Because there will be a partial resurrection at the beginning of the last plagues. At ang malaking Grupo, the great multitude, all of them are dead from Adam until the last dead, but they were not partakers of the message of the third angel's message. Meron silang ibang minsahi, but they are found to be faithful according to the light they received. The Lord will accept their sincerity of purpose, and they will be part of the great multitude. Sila po ay mabubuhay at the coming of Christ in the second coming. Salamat po sa inyong pakikinig at nawa po kayo ay nakakuha, nakapulot po ng lesson sa ating study. May the Lord bless you and give you encouragement. Amen.